Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Let's learn a very important topic today that is antihypertensive drugs. This is examiner's favorite question. So watch this lecture carefully. Not only from exam point of view, but hypertension being a very common condition nowadays, many of your friends, family, relatives may be suffering from hypertension and they ask you questions regarding hypertension, you being a doctor. So to overcome the embarrassment of not knowing the antihypertensive drugs, let's learn this topic well. But before that, please subscribe to our channel. There are so many of you out there who have not yet subscribed. अरे यार subscribe करने में क्या जाता है? Knowledge आता है. इसलिए अपना घाटा मत कीजिए और subscribe कीजिए Easy Dentistry by Dr. Pranali Satpute channel को. और आपके सब friends के साथ जरूर जरूर ये lectures share करें. Knowledge बांटने से बढ़ता है. तो आइए knowledge बढ़ाए. Knowledge लोगों में बांटे. ये lectures लोगों में बांटे. So let's begin. Aaj ka topic antihypertensive drugs. Now antihypertensive drugs are used to lower down your blood pressure. Now as I've already told you, hypertension is very common nowadays. Now hypertension is a risk factor for cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. A patient is known to be of more risk to cardiovascular diseases if his or her systolic BP is more than 120 millimeter of mercury column and diastolic BP is more than 80 mm of mercury column. According to WHO and International Society of Hypertension and the report of the 7th meeting by Joint National Commission, a patient is said to have a hypertension if his BP is more than 140 by 90 millimeter of mercury column. Now dental consideration, many of your patients whom you would be treating in your clinics may be on long term antihypertensive drug therapy. So let us understand this hypertension and many antihypertensive drugs in detail. First, the classification of antihypertensive drugs. There are five classes of antihypertensive drugs. A visual mnemonic to remember these five classes of drugs is deep and vast studies create rank one. So here you can see a girl who is having deep knowledge. She, he, she studies every subject deeply and has a vast knowledge of this subject so she has done deep and vast studies so she will get rank one in her exam so deep and vast study create rank one so deep stands for diuretics vast for vasodilators studies for sympathetic inhibitors create for the calcium channel blockers and rank one for the ras inhibitors so the diuretics group of antihypertensives is made up of three subclasses thiazides, high ceiling diuretics and potassium sparing diuretics. So to remember these three classes again a continuation of our mnemonic deep and vast studies create rank one. So how long you should study till the clock stops. So till for thiazide clock for high ceiling diuretics and stops for the potassium sparing diuretics. Now the second group of the antihypertensive drugs are the vasodilators. There are two types arteriolar and, hydra uh, and arteriolar plus venodilators. Now the arteriolar vasodilators incl uh, include hydralazine, while the arteriovenodilators includes nitroprusside sodium. Now the third group is that of sympathetic inhibitors which include beta blockers, alpha blockers, alpha plus beta blockers and central sympatholytics. 
Now, in our lecture on anti-adrenergic drugs, which you all have watched, we have studied in detail with mnemonics what are the beta blockers, what are the alpha blockers, what are the alpha plus beta blockers, and central sympatholytic drugs. So, go back to that chapter on anti-adrenergic drug, and there you can find in detail the beta blockers. Uh, the same mnemonic which you have, I have discussed in that chapter, anti-adrenergic drug, is Mo bakes excellent cake on birthdays. So, following this mnemonic, all beta blockers can be enumerated like propranolol, metaprolol, atenolol. Then the alpha blockers are the alpha 1 selective. This also we have studied in detail in anticholinergic drugs. You can find the link of which in the description box. The alpha blocker group of drugs follow the mnemonic which we have discussed in that chapter of anticholinergic drugs. Uh, Daddy, please try alpha T. So you can uh, relate with the alpha adrenergic blockers that is prazosin, tirazosin and doxazosin. Then alpha plus beta blockers, the, the uh, mnemonic for this which we have discussed in the anticholinergic chapter is that Chanalal which is this guy who throws fancy parties. So Chanalal is the alpha plus beta blocker which includes carvedioil and labitalol. The, now, uh, the next uh, subclass is central sympatholytics which include clonidine and methyl dopa. So go back to your chapter on anticholinergic drugs and get thorough, revise the alpha and the beta blockers and their antihypertensive effect in that chapter. The fourth class is that of the calcium channel blockers. This chapter also we have studied and you all have watched. Go back to that chapter. The link is provided in the description box. The mnemonic used for these calcium channel blockers are the first three words of the famous Shah Rukh Khan movie, Fir Bhi Dil Hai Hindustani. Fir stands for phenyl alkyl amine. B stands for benzodiazepine. And Dil stands for dihydropyridine. So, the phenyl alkyl amine example is verapamil, benzothiazepine is uh, deltiazem and dihydropine have a long list ending with pine. So I have also told you if you have to want to uh, remember the DHP list, remember a pineapple and then you can enlist the entire list of drugs like nifedipine, amlodipine, felodipine, nitrendipine and so on. Go back to the chapter on calcium channel blockers and, uh, and revise it. The fifth group is the RAS inhibitors which include ACE inhibitors, AT1 antagonist and direct renin inhibitors. RAS inhibitors also we have discussed in detail in a different lecture. The link of which you can find in the description box. The various ACE inhibitors are ending with April, which makes you an April fool, like Captopril, Inalapril, Lizinopril, Perintopril, while the 81 antagonists are Lozartan, Candisteran, Valsartan, Telmisartan, and so on. And the direct renin inhibitor is Aliskirin. So go, go back to your chapter on ACE inhibitors and revise it. Now, Find the link in the description box and get thorough with the antihypertensive actions of all these drugs. Now let's study in detail the diuretics and the vasodilators. The diuretics are the first line antihypertensive drugs. There are three classes of diuretics which we have studied with the mnemonic till clock stops. That is thiazide, high ceiling diuretics and the potassium sparing diuretics. The thiazide group include hydrochlorothiazide and chlorthalidone. This is the drug of choice for uncomplicated hypertension. Now, what is diuresis? Diuresis is the loss of water and sodium from the urine. So, this 
diuresis cause decrease in plasma and extracellular fluid volume by 10%. This decrease in plasma and ECF decrease in the cardiac output. Compensatory mechanism is then activated and the, there is regain of the lost sodium and plasma volume. This regaining of the lost sodium and plasma volume helps to restore the cardiac output but the fall in the BP continues. So this is the mechanism of action of the diuretics. Now fall in BP with thiazide is very less that is approximately 10 to 10 millimeter of mercury column and it occurs over a weeks a two to four weeks time. Now these thiazides they potential potentiate other hyperten antihypertensive drugs then they prevent the tolerance which is developed to certain antihypertensive drugs and the maximum efficacy is at a dose of 25 milligram. Now the second subclass of diuretics are the high ceiling diuretics which include furosemide. It is a strong diuretic but a weaker hypertensive drug. Now it is used mostly in complicated hypertension conditions that is hypertension associated with chronic renal failure, refractory congestive heart, dis heart failure and the uh, resistance to combination containing thiazides. Marked fluid retention cases also this furosemide can be used. Now the third subclass is the potassium sparing diuretics. They lower the BP slightly. They are given in addition to thiazides. They prevent potassium loss and they augment for the antihypertensive action of thiazides. Now after discussing about the th diuretics, the last class we, we will have to uh, discuss here is that of vasodilators. There are two kinds of vasodilators, arteriolar dilator which include hydralazine and arteriolar plus venodilator which include nitroprusside sodium. Now the hydralazine it acts upon the arteries. Systolic BP is lower than the diastolic BP. The cardiac stimulation may occur which may precipitate angina. Tolerance may develop to this drug so it is given in combination with a diuretic thiazide or a beta block. Oral absorption is quite satisfactory, effect lasts for 12 hours, but the adverse effects of vasodilation may be flushing, headache, angina, MI, tremors, lupus erythematosus like reaction and rheumatoid arthritis. The uses of hydralazine is in moderate to severe hypertension which is not controlled by first line drug. It is given in, in combination with a diuretic or a beta blocker. Now this hydralazine is considered to be the anti-hypertensive of choice in pregnancy. Remember this it is asked usually in MCQ exams. It is the anti-hypertensive of choice during pregnancy. pregnancy. Now, the second group of vasodilators is sodium nitroprusside, which is arteriolar plus venodilator. It has rapid and consistent action. The action may start within seconds and the duration of action take 2 to 5 minutes. Now, sodium nitroprusside is acted upon by RBCs and endothelial cells to release nitrous oxide. Now this nitrous oxide it relaxes the vascular smooth muscles resulting into vasodilation. Now it is used mostly in hypertensive emergencies. 50 mg of sodium nitroprusside is added to 500 ml of saline and then the infusion is done at a rate of 0.02 mg per minute. Side effects include palpitation, nervousness, vomiting, perspiration and weakness. While the use is to produce controlled hypotension, refractory CHF cases and in cases with pump failure accompanying myocardial infarction. 
so here we complete with the discussion of anti hypertensive drugs the next lecture will be on treatment of hypertension i have purposefully made this treatment of hypertension lecture separate for you because it is asked frequently in exams and you should be totally thorough with this treatment of hypertension so if you don't want to miss any marks in your exams please subscribe to our channel we want to reach a subscriber landmark of 20k very very jaldi please please subscribe to our channel 20k bana do please please jaldi bye